1974, the people were shocked by a young man killing his entire family while they're sleeping. So, what happened that day at Ocean Avenue in Amityville? And was it really a demonic possession? In this video, we're diving into the details of what really happened. Now, turn your lights off, set back and enjoy. On November 13, 1974, a 23-year-old auto mechanic named Ronald DeFeo took a high-powered rifle and killed all six members of his family, two parents and four siblings were shot while they lay in their beds. Now let's compare what we saw in the movies with what really happened. How many people were murdered in the real Amityville Horror House? 6. The Amityville Horror True Story reveals that on the night of November 13, 1974, 23-year-old eldest son Ronald DeFeo Jr., born September 26, 1951, shot his parents, two brothers and two sisters with a 35 caliber Marlin rifle while they slept. The six victims include Ronald Joseph DeFeo, Sr., 43. Louise Brigante DeFeo, 42. Dawn Therese DeFeo, 18. Alison Louise DeFeo, 13. Mark Gregory DeFeo, 12. John Matthew DeFeo, 9. Did Ronald DeFeo testify that voices told him to commit the murders? Yes. As Ronald DeFeo Jr.'s defense attorney, William Weber, was trying to establish an insanity plea, DeFeo testified that he heard voices that told him to murder his family. Assistant District Attorney Gerard Sullivan made sure that the insanity plea didn't hold up, eventually convincing all 12 jurors to deliver a guilty verdict. In a 2002 primetime live interview that Ronald DeFeo Jr. gave from prison, he recanted his testimony, explaining that his parents were abusive and he committed the murders while drunk and high on heroin. Ronald DeFeo Jr., who died in March 12, 2021, at the age of 69 in prison at Greenhaven Correctional Facility in Beekman, New York. On November 25, 1975, he was convicted of six counts of second-degree murder, and he was sent there to serve the six consecutive life sentences he was given. Where is the real Amityville Horror House located? The real Amityville House was located on Long Island at 112 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, New York. However, the address has since been changed to 108 Ocean Avenue in an effort to deter tourists from visiting the location. Did a priest really bless the house when the Lutz family was moving in? On December 18, 1975, the day that the real Lutz family was moving into their new Ocean Avenue home in Amityville, a Catholic priest allegedly came by to bless the house, supposedly at the request of Kathy Lutz. On October 4, 1979, a little more than two months after the release of the movie, the investigative television program, In Search of featured an episode that included an interview with who they claim is the real Amityville priest. He wanted to remain anonymous, so his face was kept hidden. The priest said, was blessing the sewing room. It was cold. It was really cold in there. I'm like, well, gee, this is peculiar, because it was a lovely day out, and it was winter, yes, but it didn't account for that kind of coldness. I was also sprinkling holy water, and I heard a rather deep voice behind me saying, get out. It seemed so directed toward me that I was really quite startled. I felt a slap at one point on the face. I felt somebody slap me, and there was nobody there. How long did the real Lutz family live in the home? With regard to the Amityville Horror True Story, it is widely known that the Lutz family spent 28 days in the home. George, Kathleen, Daniel, Christopher and Missy moved in on December 18, 1975 and fled on January 14, 1976. Did the priest really get static on the phone when he tried to call and warn the Lutzes? Yes at least according to the TV program In Search of and their 1979 interview with who they state is the real Amityville priest. Noise interference prevented any phone communication and he could never get through to warn the family. Is there any evidence that the real Amityville house was haunted? 
yes. But it has been shrouded in controversy. The debate over the alleged Amityville ghost image has been going on ever since George Lutz first revealed it during an interview on The Merv Griffin Show in 1979. It had been taken three years earlier in 1976 by Ed and Lorraine Warren's team of paranormal investigators, namely a professional photographer by the name of Gene Campbell. Campbell had set up a camera equipped with black and white infrared film to shoot automatically during the night. Numerous rolls of film were used, with only one suspicious image being captured. The Amityville ghost image shows a figure with white eyes peering out of a doorway. Some believe that it is a demon or possibly the ghost of the murdered DeFeo boy, John. Others have concluded that it is likely one of the investigators, in particular a man named Paul Bartz. They cite that his white eyes were possibly due to the infrared camera film. Were there cold spots in the real Amityville Horror House? Yes. At least according to most of the people involved in the story. This includes son Daniel Lutz and father Ralph Pecoraro, the priest who allegedly blessed the home. The strange coldness is why the movie depicts George Lutz constantly chopping wood and burning the home's fireplace. Son Daniel Lutz gives his account in the documentary My Amityville Horror, released in 2012. Did a swarm of flies appear in the home? Yes. During an interview with Inside Edition in 2005, Chris explained that. There was definitely a lot of flies but nothing again like Hollywood is portraying it. His brother Daniel also mentioned issues with flies in his documentary My Amityville Horror, although he claims there were many more. Did the toilets overflow with a black sludge? Not exactly. At least not according to what George Lutz said during the 1979 Good Morning America interview. He states that it was the porcelain toilet bowls themselves that turned black, not the water. Did Missy have an imaginary friend named Jody? Our exploration into the Amityville horror true story revealed that according to George Lutz, Missy did have an imaginary slash paranormal friend named Jody. The entity would present itself to his daughter in different forms, including as an angel and as a large pig. In the movie, George, James Brolin, sees Jody in pig form in an upstairs window. Earlier, his wife Kathy, Margot Kidder, sees Jody's glowing red eyes through a window in the darkness. Did Daniel get his hand smashed in a window? Yes, according to Daniel Lutz, he did get his hand smashed by the window. In real life, Daniel says that the window smashed his hand skin on skin, emphasizing the initial severity of his injury. In his documentary My Amityville Horror, he holds his hand up in front of the camera to demonstrate that his little finger is still bent from the injury. Moments later, he contradicts himself somewhat by saying that his hand had magically healed just minutes after the injury. In the movie, the parents take their son to the hospital and are eerily amazed that there are no broken bones in his hand. Was there really a secret red room in the basement? Yes, but the red room was exaggerated in the movie and book. In reality, the red room wasn't all that secret. It was part of a storage space under the basement stairs. Patty Comerato, a former friend of the murdered DeFeo daughter Allison, revisits the real Amityville Red Room during a 1980 episode of That's Incredible. She says that the DeFeos used to store toys in the small red space. Do actors Ryan Reynolds and Melissa George believe that the story is true? Yes. Unlike actors James Brolin and Margot Kidder, who starred in the original 1979 version, both Ryan Reynolds and Melissa George have indicated that they believe that there is a significant amount of truth to the Lutz's story. Actor Ryan Reynolds said, I believe that houses definitely have residual energy in them. In a case such as the Amityville House, having six murders take place quite brutally, I think there is a profound amount of malevolent and dark energy that was still lingering in the house when George and Kathy Lutz and family moved in there. So. I think that they were driven out by this malevolent energy and that was our opportunity to showcase that in the movie. Before doing this movie, I believed that there is a lot of truth in what the Lutzes went through, and afterwards, my opinion stays the same. I was just playing a role. I never got too involved in the supernatural in the house that we were filming in. My opinion stays the same in that is if they said it happened, then I believe it happened. Thank you for watching. 
Hope you've enjoyed this video. If that's what happened, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more true stories.